Okay, friends. Now let us look inside the tertiary structure of a protein molecule. Now, as you know, that when we start our journey from amino acid sequences, we, which are joined together via peptide bonds, and we make the peptide chain. Now, those peptide chains are arranged together. They will interact with each other in uh, in uh, with using hydrogen bonds most of the time to form uh, the domains of. Uh, the secondary structure and these domains are often made up with alpha helices and beta sheets most abundantly and this alpha helices and beta sheets are linked together via linkers like hairpins or crossovers or twists or turns something like that then finally make uh, the domain structure stable now this domain structure are not uh, the exact compact structure of a protein now the protein needs another round of proper folding and that fold finally turns the structure into something more complex and condensed structure which is called the tertiary structure so in this tertiary structure of a protein is uh, is uh, the three dimensional arrangement so when you are talking about tertiary structure we have a 3d structure with th three uh, degree structure third degree structure or tertiary structure that's why the name come from we are talking about the 3d structure the three dimensional arrangement of the different proteins moieties so what we are having we are having uh, the domains the previously formed which are alpha helices and beta sheets and turns and loops and we n we now see that how those domains are interacting with each other to form a functional protein molecule now when we are talking about this tertiary structure we we finally try to make a protein which is resembling uh, the morphology of a proper protein which is resembling the proper function of a protein okay so in this case also we can also see except for uh, only the interaction between domains we can see other cofactors are coming other heme uh, other type of groups other metal ions are coming which are holding the structure together which are helping to hold the structure together example uh, for our blood uh, hemoglobin we are having heme or iron in case of uh, in case of say hemocyanin we have copper so this kind of ion, uh, ions uh, iron uh, ions are important for holding the structure together now if we look at the structure which is a presentation of extra structure of sperm whale uh, myoglobin now you can see this is a globular structure and we are s we are looking at the structure uh, here in this structure what we can see there are uh, different regions so there there are regions of uh, domains now if i go back to to this kind of structure that will help you to understand because in this structure we are having the alpha helices and the turns in this picture as we are seeing that no beta sheets are involved to make this kind of structure so we are having only alpha helices and the loops or turns okay now the arrangement of this alpha helices are really important to make a proper function protein so if you have amino acid sequence you arrange them together you finally make this each this part is am, uh, alpha helices this part is beta sheet this part is uh, beta turn or loop and something like that they will interact together to make a protein your job is not done because your job is half of the done because most of the part is remain uh, as a proper function of a protein depends on not only the structure but also also the structural arrangement of different domains so domain one single domain or if we arrange up to the domain uh, array of a protein structure we cannot say we make a uh, we, we predict the structure of a protein properly we just predict nothing so we have to look for the arrangement of those domains the interaction of those domains together to make a protein which resembling not only structure of a protein but also the function of a protein so a 3d structure of a protein will have a structure uh, which have a protein which can act like a protein which has the property of a fully functional protein so we, what we are talking about is to make something more arranging something more arranging uh, than uh, the domain structures so we are arranging those domains we are interacting those domains interaction of those domains lead to the formation of what is called motifs or those motifs that means who is related to whom what domains are related to what is depend on that so if we add alpha helix then uh, one turn then a beta sheet we have a, a type of protein if we add alpha helix alpha helix alpha helix then beta sheet we have another type of protein we have two beta sheet in between them one alpha helix we have another functional of protein and we have one beta sheet two alpha helix then one beta sheet we have another type of protein so depending upon the arrangement of those domains uh, the protein function is uh, totally fixed or protein function is dependent so so now you can imagine how much uh, conformation of a protein can be produced so a protein can be exist in, in enormous forms that's why it has been thought that the protein is the most versatile of all macromolecules 
and it is indeed because it can be existed in several different types of forms in, in in millions and millions of different types of forms if i give you one chain of amino acid and i give you the uh, and i tell you that do the combination of this amino acid to make different types of varieties of proteins and fully functional proteins you can say we can produce uh, trillions of types of proteins from that one type of amino acid sequences but the answer is only few of them will be fully functional protein because the arrangement what we are talking about most of the time and is not uh, work is not working actually so some of the arrangement among all those permutation combination will have to play the work so some of them can only do the work what a protein meant to do okay so that's why it's important when you talk about protein folding you can see that the protein folding can be exist in many different ways a protein can be folded in several different ways by arranging those domains and making those motifs together uh, and arranging them together but only few of them uh, have the characteristic of functional protein or properly functional protein only few of them will will place or uh, will state the proper function of a protein okay so as we can look here inside this uh, sperm tail uh, sp sp uh, sperm whale uh, myoglobin structure as we can see inside that we have this group uh, this metal group this metal group is actually helping uh, so to arrange the structures because sometimes the metal groups are having charges and this charge will have interaction with the amino acid uh, side chains which are polar in nature so it can have the charge interaction so this is a, a generation of electrostatic interaction due to the presence of this kind of structure so uh, suppose one here inside in case of hemoglobin one uh, iron is present and that iron has the capability of binding with a uh, different because iron has positive charge so it can bind with the negatively charged amino acids like aspartic or uh, aspartic acid or glutamic acid to finally hold the structures together so we can find the amino acid sequences that inside the hemoglobin which are processing those uh, uh, negatively charged amino acids surround that uh, hemo here so surround that iron so that kind of structure can be formed now if we are looking at uh, here uh, a very important assumption about this three dimensional structure of a protein that the side chain location varies with polarity as we know uh, that the arrangement of protein will vary so if we add uh, this valine leucine isolation methionine this residues which are non polar in nature phenylalanine largely it will occur that this of this amino acids can be found at the interior portion of a protein rather than the outer uh, outside of the protein now if we uh, think about the charged residues or polar residues like arginine histidine lysine aspartic acid glutamic acid they are largely found in the surface of a protein in contact with the aqueous solvent now what kind of interactions we can have between those domains as we have talked before the interaction may be hydrophobic interaction the interactions may be electrostatic interaction the interactions may be hydrogen bonding sometimes the interactions may be Uh, disulfide linkages so this kind of interactions we can have to make this tertiary structure uh, stable okay and remember one thing there is only one uh, structure which is disulfide bond is a covalent structure among all or uh, is the, and uh, and except for that all the other structures we have talked before the electrostatic interactions the van der waals forces uh, uh, the hydrophobic interaction hydrogen bonding all these are the non covalent forces so non covalent forces plays the most important role for holding these structures though they are not very much strong though they are less effective but still many of this no, less effective structures hold the structures together and and, and it gives a uh, the magnification effect uh, to finally hold the structure of a protein if we look at the extra crystallographic structure of a jag bean protein which is concanavalin a we can see it is made up with uh, turns and beta sheets only so beta sheets are arranged in in this way and we have turns and the turns are uh, connecting this all these beta sheets and as we can see another important assumption as i as i told before it's not about only the making the domains the what type of domains are there how many domains are there how many alpha helices is there how many beta sheets is there this is not something which only determines the protein's function the protein's function the protein structure and function will be determined by not only the presence of type of domains but the presence of interactions between that domain the presence of properly functional motifs inside that protein to proteins okay so as we can look that this beta sheets are arranging not parallelly you can see sometimes they are parallel sometimes they are anti parallel but what happens the arrangement Some 
some of the beta sheets are perpendicular you can see uh, which are horizontally placed and some of them are slightly tilted in different angles so this kind of arrangement now you can see small uh, beta sheets like that so th all of these have to have a count to finally make a properly functional protein that is really really important for example in this picture which is the structure of a human carbonic anhydrase which is a widely studied enzyme now you can see uh, in this structure, there are many things like alpha helices, beta sheets, uh, parallel, anti-parallel beta sheets, and we have uh, these loops and turns. So if uh, we can find, we, fi we can find this this alpha helis, green color alpha helis placed here. So if we just uh, take this alpha helis from here and put uh, here some somewhere, or s we just th this alpha is slightly tilted. So if we just straighten out and look for the function, we might lose the function of this carbonic anhydrase enzyme. Okay, so all of this minute, minute detailing, the actual thing that I want to, you to say is all of this minute detailing is important. So if you change some part, if you, if you change some one or two degree angle change, that will change the whole function. That will make the protein malfunctionous, that will make the protein uh, to function like uh, a toxin uh, that, that, that may uh, lead to the, pro uh, to the blockage of the protein function. So this, all of these consequences can be possible if we change the structure so these arrangements are really really important the arrangements are making the structure of a protein and the structure of a protein will finally demonstrates the function of a protein so it's not about the presence of domains it's not about the presence of motifs but the domains interaction the uh, the interactions of motifs which are uh, predicting the structure of a protein Okay. For example, if we look at in this case, uh, we are having different amino acids fr from 127 residue, 127, 128 or so. So this is a helical uh, structural protein, so helical in nature. And this part of the protein, if you if you can arrange this according to their presence, then you can find this part of the protein are made up with histidine uh, and and all this uh, phenylalanine, methionine, isoleucine, leucine which are all hydrophobic amino acids and this is a leucine which is also hydrophobic so if we think that if this uh, are making a helical structural uh, uh, domain of a protein then uh, this helical protein will have this region will have the hydrophobic in nature so again in the picture from the top view or the upper portion view we can see this region is hydrophobic and again this region is hydrophobic that means uh, we can say that when we have interaction of the protein it must uh, interact uh, uh, with some hydrophobic uh, molecules with this surface and all this other surface will interact with the water molecule or water loving molecules or hydrophilic molecules okay so now we can look the structure like that so as we can see by looking at the structure we can say that this left hand side part mostly are facing the hydrophilic solvent and and the and the portion this right hand portion as a result it they are make, made by uh, the presence of hydrophobic residues uh, they are interacting with hydrophobic amino acids most of the time okay and uh, this protein as we know this is the alpha helix of sperm whale myoglobin so as we know if this is a domain is, is, is this is the ar arrangement of a, of a domain like uh, like alpha helix then this part is going to be interact with interacted with another alpha helix or something like that which is possessing uh, this are uh, hydrophobic groups from its other end so it will have to have a hydrophobic interaction at, at this region to make this protein rigid okay that is an explanation now this is uh, the the take home message that not only the structure of a protein uh, is based on the presence of different domains the presence of different amino acid sequences but it is based on the interactions so I the three dimensional structure is all about the arrangement three dimensional arrangement of proteins in proper arrangement leads to the proper function of a protein and the less arrangement uh, and, and improper arrangement leads to the blockage of the protein function and man functioning protein production of malfunctioning protein now that's all and i hope that's going to help you thank you